garlic is as good as 10 mothers. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Plato from MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story plus other old wisdom dressed up as new news on this episode. But our first very obvious story comes via the UK Express and was submitted to us on Twitter via our newest subscriber to Media Monarchy, at Ray Vahey. Study shows making love wards off dementia. Getting frisky between the sheets could benefit your brain health, according to a Coventry University study. Older men, and it's not just all older men in this study, but it's who they focus on, older men who enjoyed regular lovemaking showed signs of a healthier brain. In particular, they were able to recall lists and recognize patterns. The research team quizzed 6,800 people aged 50 to 89 from all across England. They were asked about their sex lives and a set number of mental tests. Participants were played a list of 10 words and asked to recount them after 5 minutes. They were also given a number sequence with one number out of place and asked to correct the pattern. Men who had a better sex life demonstrated better cognitive function. The men who were sexually active scored 23% higher on the word test and 3% higher on the number puzzles. But it wasn't just the men who benefited from a healthy sex life. Sexually active women also scored higher on the tests. Researchers believe sex hormones like dopamine and oxytocin, which are linked to the part of the brain responsible for reward, could help cognitive function. This is just one of the many studies suggesting lifestyle factors play a key role in preventing dementia. They said, quote, the findings have implications for the promotion of sexual counseling in healthcare settings, where maintaining a healthy sex life in older age could be instrumental in improving cognitive function and well-being. This study was published in the journal Age and Aging, and we do have links to the actual studies with the abstracts and the PDFs, and like everything we say and play on these episodes, it's all in the show notes. Our cover story this week takes its title from a 1980 documentary, Garlic is as Good as Ten Mothers, but the real headline is, Onion and Garlic Kill Infections, There's No Need for Drugs. This story via the BBC and at Neon Nettle, scientists have recently discovered that a 9th century Anglo-Saxon remedy for eye infections, which uses simple ingredients such as raw onion and garlic, is just as effective, if not more so, than modern-day expensive pharmaceutical drug treatments. The thousand-year-old treatment, which uses nothing more than onion and some cloves of garlic, is able to kill a range of antibiotic-resistant superbugs, including MRSA, M-R-S-A. So the BBC reports, Their findings will be presented at a national microbiology conference, and the remedy was found in Bald's Leech Book, an old English manuscript containing instructions on various treatments held in the British Library. Anglo-Saxon expert Dr. Christina Lee from the University of Nottingham translated the recipe for an eye salve which included garlic, onion or leeks, wine, and cow bile. Experts from the university's microbiology team recreated the remedy and then tested it on large cultures of MRSA. Dr. Freya Harrison said the team thought the eye salve might show a small amount of antibiotic activity, but we were absolutely blown away by just how effective the combination of ingredients was, she said. She said there are many similar medieval books with treatments for what appear to be bacterial infections. She said this could suggest people were carrying out detailed scientific studies centuries before bacteria were even discovered. The team's findings will be presented, as noted, at the annual conference for the Society of General Microbiology coming up in Birmingham. And the ingredients for this eye salve, with the the amounts and everything, the recipe, are in the article as well. So this is a pretty fundamental thing here. But we're essentially coming back to what we used to know for generations and centuries. And in a lot of ways, we're realizing, oh, the answers are all in nature. We use a lot of garlic here at our place, sometimes half a dozen cloves a day. It's a very fundamental thing. Start using and start growing garlic yourself. That is a Food World Order good news next week must. And now our final story on this week's very simple, very fundamental episode of Good News Next Week via activist post. (gasps) Stop the presses. Study shows marijuana safer than cigarettes and alcohol. With the battle for the legalization of marijuana being considered one of the more prevalent issues in today's society, it's upon scientists and researchers to now look deeper into the chemical makeup of marijuana and indicate whether smoking marijuana yields less dangerous side effects than consuming alcohol. In an article from just about one year ago from NBC, marijuana is grouped first 
among nine other drugs including heroin and hallucinogens and was considered the safest, of course, by a landslide. Then, when compared to alcohol and tobacco, marijuana is considered by far the safest, even when compared to alcohol and cigarettes. The article then follows to discuss the long-term effects of both recreational and chronic use of marijuana as compared to alcohol and tobacco. The findings showed that chronic tobacco and alcohol consumption led to, well, you know. A very three fundamental, simple kind of stories that, again, show once you are able to strip away a lot of the extraneous garbage and a lot of the noise and a lot of the lies that we've been fed literally and figuratively throughout the years, it comes down to something very simple, and a lot of times a lot of the answers have been here for us all along, but they have been hidden for, golly gosh, some reason or for some nefarious purpose. So I think it is quite a bit of good news that we can start to share these very simple things that you can start doing right now, and it doesn't have to be, oh, I changed my whole life overnight. It's not going to happen that way, and don't get frustrated by trying to do it that way. We also want to wrap up this Good News Next Week episode by looking at some of the other good news stories, and any number of these could have made, you might argue, better stories to cover in this episode, but sometimes you want to put together a batch of stories that tell a tale, if you will. But again, all the links, everything we say and play in the show notes, let's blast down through the other Good News Next Week headlines submitted to us via our buddy at Miles of Truth, Arizona considering ban on free speech zones on college campuses. Warner Chapel to pay back $14 million they took away that they didn't own by saying they owned the happy birthday song. Bo Boi noted the court stopped the FBI from violating FOIA laws. Vulgarian Scroll, our buddy Eric, who helps us out on MediaMonarchy.com, posting the Holy Hexes stories, noted a snowy owl got shot and says, oh really, while recovering. Russia planning to replace all windows with Linux computers. Community gardeners moved off a tiny plot of land to a huge new acreage of land. And Minneapolis OK's eased rules for keeping chickens in the city. That's from our buddy at Rad Confluence. Bill introduced to end mandatory U.S. draft registration. You always kind of wonder about that. Hey, I thought you got rid of the draft, but you make me sign up at 18 just in case. Nike Adidas workers go on strike in Vietnam. 10,000 Greek farmers stage massive revolt in Athens. You should see footage of that. And study shows attitude more important than IQ. That story submitted to us again by our latest Media Monarchy subscriber, Ray Vahey. And we appreciate that story. And it comes full circle and shows that a lot of it is in your mind and in your attitude. We love getting your story ideas for Good News next week and hope you'll continue sharing ways that we are winning and it does not have to be just on Twitter. You can email me, james at mediamonarchy.com or leave your ideas in the comments below. We can only do this also with your support. Go to mediamonarchy.com slash support to become a Media Monarchy subscriber. This has been Good News Next Week. I'm James Evan Pilato from mediamonarchy.com reminding you as always, don't hate the media. Become the media. Take care.